I just gotta know. Is there any animal you're most excited to see? Yes. Okay. Lions? Elephants? That's a good one. Rhinos? Rhinos. Animals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those are all good ones. Anybody a hippo fan? I love hippos, personally. And flamingos. Oh, yeah. Let's go see what we can find. Oh. We are going into the little witchery forest. The animals here they like to hide, so you're looking far and wide to try to find them. Hand side that is a saddle built stork on the ground, the big bird. Sitting right behind that bush. We're actually going to see another one up ahead of us on that hill. It is a bird that stands at five feet tall. And they have a wingspan of nine feet, which is the size of a canopy above your head. There he's up there, up to the right. You can kind of see him. Now the two of them, they are a love couple that will make your life without ever separating. But they just can't vocalize to each other. They will rather look bills to communicate with one another. Now they're usually found on land or in water, splashing with their feet and poking with their bills to do their prey. But when it pops up, they do oh, have is. the ability to swallow it whole. Oh, on the left, that's a bongo. There's a few more. Nicknamed the ghost of the forest due to how well it can keep from being heard or seen when they sneak around. <gasps> Behind the bongo, that's a greater kudu back there. You see those big ears glistening? They like to make sure it's safe to be where they are. If they discover it's unsafe or they fear anything coming their way, they'll jump as high as 8 feet in the air to evade their predators. When we're coming all this way, we're leaving the forest over to the Safi River. We're going to look underwater for what we can find. On the right, in the very corner, are Nile hippopotamus down there. And on the shoreline are pink back pelicans. The only one of their eight species who nest in trees. But the hippos, we're still looking for more. On the left, they're looking at you! The one on the left is actually sleeping on top of another one, and it's a sign that they're family. They'll be in water for up to 16 hours in a day, but they're too heavy to swim while they're in there. So they go to the bottom where they can walk, run, and jog to move. They do hold their breath for 8 minutes at a time. It's going to be quite a while before we see any movement from them. But the same applies to our friends, the Nile crocodiles on the left. They'll sit still and let their prey do the work for them. Savannah, which is the largest part of our reserve. 
they're gonna lack vegetation out there, so they're much easier to find. And they will stick in large groups to protect each other. So you may even see multiple of each species out here. We're gonna have to look all around. unique to each one of them, which is why they can be called painted dogs. They will use those as identification from miles away. Just like the zebras with their stripes. The zebra stripes are unique to each one so they can see each other, but it's also unique to their species. So they're white underbelly and thicker, wider stripes. Those are Hartman Mountain Zebra there. You can identify them just like they identify each other. As we go forward, you'll start to see these big pointy things. Those are termite mounds. And they're made of dung, dirt, and saliva. And they're baked in the sun all day does make them harder than concrete. Small animals are able to use a termite mound as a workout point, and any animal can use it as a scratching post. But our next animal sticks in the largest herd of any animal in the world. These are the wildebeest. They will travel in groups of 1.5 million at a time. Second to humans in terms of size. So when they're eating like this, they can help set the spread of wildfires together. But when they go stampeding, they can help revive ecosystems by their feet overturning all the soil. On the right again, out on that hill by that tree, those are the springbok. They're such a small antelope, they can go almost their entire life without drinking from water sources. They get their water from the vegetation that they eat around them. But goodbye, up ahead of us are Maasai giraffes. And in the mix of them as well, that's an eland back there. Yeah. Oh, eland are the largest species of antelope in the world, and they stand at six feet tall. Two, how tall giraffes are when they're born? They'll grow to be 16 to 20 feet tall, so they're the tallest land animal. You'll find them walking around and eating for so long of their day, but they only sleep for an hour a day. They'll have their height to help them reach, but they also have 18 inch long tongues. If you happen to see it, it helps you reach the food, but it's black and purple to help you keep from getting sunburned while they do so as well. Someone 
Someone said it. You may have noticed we just passed by some big fallen trees a moment ago. It tells me we're approaching something much larger, like the elephants. We have one more place we can look for them, maybe to the right. Seeing him, so we're going to keep looking further ahead of us. A fun fact to know along the way is elephants are so large, they spend their day eating 300 pounds of vegetation. But while they do that, they travel around to find their food, they lack stomach acid, so they don't digest all of it. And they'll go to defecate up to 150 pounds in a day before they spread their back. Because when it dries, it helps revive ecosystems. They are super spreaders of vegetation. For themselves, they don't get what they need to eat, so they'll come to eat these red clay balls around us here to get their nutrients. If you see the tusk marks, we may find elephants up ahead. As you saw in the first area, they do play hide and seek pretty well. So we're looking behind the rocks and the vegetation to see what we can find. Ah, I found them though. All the way in the very right corner under that tree. Way far through, there's at least two of them. This is probably the most we're gonna see. I'll be honest with you. But at least we saw them. That's pretty cool. You see a few more signs of them along the way. Like their big muddy area out to the left. They actually have such sensitive skin, they're known to be scared of bumblebees. So throughout the day, the elephants throw mud and dirt on their back to have a sunblock and insect repellent. Helps keep them protected. Many other animals will come down to this mud hole and use it for the same reason. But our next ones will use it to create nests for their babies. Around the corner here are the greater flamingos. They're the largest and lightest pink of their species. They're born as great puff balls. They get their color by eating brine shrimp and beta carotene. You count them in the middle of the meeting. harder to find. They like to sleep in hard to see areas. So we're ser still searching around us a few more times. Uh, for example, you see the mud hole out to the left. The mud hole in trees is a sign of rhinos. They dig their hole in the ground using their horns like a shovel and of course it acts as sunblock. But when it dries up and gets gross, they'll wipe it on trees to get rid of it. So they're here. We're just going to have to keep searching as we go ahead. In the meantime, on our left, you'll want to search in the dark shadows on those hills. We're looking for the cheetahs. The only thing is the user spots as camouflage to keep from being seen while they're vulnerable. So it makes them incredibly hard to find. Well, that's okay. Because up ahead of us, you're going to find some large rocks, which is a sign of large animals. Like the big cat that's right on top of them. You 
kind of a good time because he's awake. They usually sleep for 18 hours a day. They actually lack sweat glands on their body, so they can't handle heat very well. They try and save their energy to hunt at night time. But see the female over here? She's the one who will hunt while the male will stay behind and protect the cubs and territory. If he's not busy, of course he can join in and help the female as well. I guess not. <laughs> she said, all right, I'll turn around. <laughs> There was one more thing that was on our right hand side. If you look all the way out there by those big trees in the distance on that hill, those are the water buck. The water buck are super cute. They have a heart shaped nose, of course, but they stink. <laughs> Uh, they usually found near water sources, which is how they get their name. But water sources are where animals of every species will come together to drink. So that something like a predator is to show up. The water buck will secrete smelly oil from themselves and <laughs> deter predators away from them. Now, um, it can also make them kind of waterproof so they can dive in the water without getting wet. But that's kind of a last resort because they're terrible swimmers. And we were waiting for our friend ahead of us to give us some clearance, but we got it. So we're going to go ahead and round the corner. Along the way to the right, you'll definitely find some unstripped eggs in the very right corner. Okay, we want to just burn egg out there. The weight three to four pounds have a really thick shell, so they're super strong. They lay them whether fertilized or not to help mark their territory. Alright, <laughs> it looks like they're approaching our organs outpost. They take care of all of the animals so they stay close by. But by passing this area, we are reaching the end of our journey. So, if you guys heard any cool facts out there, or how to get photos of the animals out there, feel free to do them a favor. Go home and spread awareness about them. Most of the species we just saw are in danger. We can really use some help. So by reducing, reusing, recycling, replenishing, we can hope to slowly bring back their lands and their lives one step at a time. It just takes a bit of effort and care from the humans who share the land with them. So if you're looking to help out today, maybe you could reuse a plastic water bottle or recycle something. Because every small step you take every day can be something large in the end for animals and ourselves as well. Go ahead and make sure you have your belongings because we're almost there.